Good afternoon. My name is Chris Patterson, and this is Stockwatch with FNN on Wednesday, the 2nd of August, 2023. Any advice provided is general advice and may not be suitable for you. Always consult your financial advisor before making any investments. All questions from viewers should be sent to stockwatch at fnn.com.au. Yesterday, the RBA left rates the same at 4.10%. I have here a chart of the yield curve from one year out to 15 years. What is significant about this, it is almost flat. Normally, a yield curve has short-term rates lower and longer-term rates higher. This is significant in that it is signaling that perhaps rates might not go up further on the short end of the curve. My economic comments on this is inflation is at 6%, target rate by the RBA is 2% to 3%, we now expect that CPI will be at three and a quarter percent by the end of 2024, according to the RBA. They expect GDP close to 2 percent throughout 2024. What this is telling us is that nominal GDP growth is currently at 8 percent, which is 6 percent inflation plus 2 percent growth. And why is this important? It tells us that nominal is going strong. That means corporate earnings should be strong, and it explains why there's full employment. Macro market concerns, well, there are three of them that I saw coming out of Bloomberg earlier in the week, and I agree with them. One is rising nuclear weapons use risk. Our planet is warming. Now, does it matter whether it is from human activity or natural warming cycle? To me, no. The fact is, the planet is warming and there's going to be a lot of consequences. We are focusing on one aspect of what is causing some of the warming, but we're not focused on what do we do because of the warming. Sea levels will rise. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to change? We've seen in Phoenix something like 31 days in a row where the temperature was over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. This is not sustainable. Humans can't live in this environment. Third area is artificial intelligence. It is harder now to recognize what is real or what is computer generated. In a lot of areas, this is not a big deal, but when it comes to hardcore information that we need to receive to make investment decisions, we have to know, is it accurate, is it true, or is it fake? Part of my job these days is ascertaining what is real news, what is fake news? Now, more immediate market focus. We have rising interest rates slowing and possibly topping out, as I mentioned before. This helps equity prices, discounted cash flow valuations, because if we aren't using a higher discount rate, that means equity price valuations will not decline. In a declining interest rate environment, DCF valuations go up. This is partly why we had a long-term bull market for 40 years in bonds and also equities because interest rates were declining ever since the early 1980s. Well, that's not happening now. Interest rates rose, and now the question is, will they go higher or will they go down a little bit? My feeling is it's probably going to be stable for quite some time, which is good because it allows corporate earnings to flow into equity pricing. There's less risk to equity investments with rising rate concern out of the way. This is all good for getting invested into the ASX 200 or any individual companies that you find attractive. Here is a fascinating chart. This answers the proverbial question of, is the Aussie dollar linked to interest rates or is it linked to commodity prices? This chart shows the Aussie US exchange rate versus the Aussie 10 year bond interest rate less the U.S. 10-year bond interest rate. What you see here is that it is a very strong correlation of interest rates that it's tied to. Here is a second chart that shows Aussie dollar versus commodity prices. For a long time, I was told in New York and then here in Sydney that the Aussie dollar is linked to commodity prices. And what you see from this chart is that has been true for a long time. However, since 2010 or so, there's been a divergence. What you see is it is no longer linked to commodity prices. Thus, if somebody wants to know 
How do you anticipate future Aussie dollar rate? Look at interest rate differential between Australia and the US. This is a fascinating chart that I wanted to share with you, and it shows why the Australian financial markets matter in global markets. It shows the past two decades how much various countries' funds under management have increased. What you see is Australia at the top, and the amount of funds that we manage professionally has soared much more than any other country. This is mostly due to superannuation, but it doesn't really matter why. It is the outcome, and that is Australia is a significant player in global markets. The sector that I wanted to cover today is the building materials business. Here in Australia, we have a few companies, and the ones that I'm focusing on, three that I find attractive. The first one is James Hardy. The code is JHX on the ASX. Last night it closed at $42.97. What you see is a company that was moving up dramatically, and then COVID came and it kind of crashed and burned, but now it's recovering. So let's take a look at the numbers. On a beta basis, which is correlation to the overall market, it's almost a one. And market cap, well, James Hardy's fairly big company at 19 billion. 12-month price target, I have $48. Different brokers are all over the place. UBS is like $49. Uh, most brokers have a buy. But let's look at these numbers. The revenue growth rate from 2023 to 2025 is estimated only 2.4% per annum. The earnings per share growth during the same period is estimated at 3.6% per annum. And the dividend growth rate, well, this is a disappointing aspect of James Hardy is they're not going to be paying a dividend for the next couple of years. The PE on next year's earnings, the 2024 earnings, estimate of $1.35 is a large 32 times. The yield on next year's dividend is zero. Well, that's zero, of course. Free cash flow is only 2%. The payout ratio is zero, but normally it's around 50%. Brokers love James Hardy. I'm not as bullish. North America is 73% of their business on an EBIT basis. U.S. building market is improving. JHX is a bet on this market strengthening. I would own it, but because it is dependent upon U.S. building market, which is very volatile, I realize it's risky. U.S. building market is recovering, so that's the only reason I would own it. On a fundamental basis, it is not demonstrating yet it's a buy. Reliance Worldwide. Code RWC, $4.16 is the closing price last night. Here again, the chart shows the impact from COVID and it's been recovering some. Looking at the numbers, this company's beta is 0 0.70, which means it's tracking to the ASX 200 about 70%, so it's less volatile. The market cap is 3.3 billion. 12 month price target I have is $4.58. Many brokers are a little bit higher. The revenue growth rate of 2023 through 2025 estimates is 3.3% per annum. Again, earnings growth for this period is 7.6% per annum. So that is pretty good. And the dividend growth rate is 4.9% per annum. Again, that's attractive. The PE on next year's earnings estimate of 20 cents is 21 times. The yield on the 2024 dividend estimate of 10.5 cents is 2.5%. The free cash flow is 6%, and the payout ratio is around 55%. Reliance Worldwide is a global plumbing and heating manufacturer. This is slow and steady wins the race category in my book. It's not fancy, but it's solid. PE is okay for an industrial company. I rate it a buy. Brickworks. A lot of people take a look at Brickworks. It's popular and it's had some ups and downs, so let's look at where it is today. The code is BKW and it's at $26.10. As you can see, it also got hit by COVID like most companies, but it's been recovering solidly since then. The beta on Brickworks is only 90% and the market cap is 3.9 billion. 12 month price target I have is $28.50. Most brokers have them as neutral. 
The revenue growth rate 2023 to 2025 is estimated to be flat. The earnings growth in the same period is estimated to be negative. The dividend growth in this period is estimated to be a positive 4.4% per annum. The PE on next year's earnings estimate of 29.8 is only 12.2 times. The yield on next year's dividend is 5.7%. And the free cash flow is 5% and it pays out 65% of its earnings as a dividend. Brickworks makes building materials. It also owns industrial property, large stakes in Salt Pattinson, and New Hope Coal. It has very good assets. It is these assets that people like within Brickworks. To me, it's a long-term buy. People who have invested over 5, 10, 20 years have been rewarded. I don't see any reason it will not continue. As always, if you want to learn more about anything I covered today, send an email request to stockwatch at fnn.com.au and please direct your email to me, Chris Pedersen, and I will endeavor to get back to you. Have a great, profitable week. Thank you.